Life is like a game of death Life strategies is just like chess Think before you move, don't rush, it's a test Kings, queens, bishops, rooks, knights, pawns, checkmate, you took Dealer brain strategies is just like chess Think before you move, don't rush, it's a test Kings, queens, bishops, rooks, knights, pawns, checkmate, you took Do you know what your team can do? Will you sacrifice four pawns to kill off two? Or will you lay in the cut, think the plan up? Uh, time is ticking back. Hi, this is Irina Slutsky reporting for Geek Entertainment Television on location in San Francisco at the Design Center at the inaugural Hip Hop Chess Federation. Yes, that's what it is. The Hip Hop <laughs> Chess Federation is our first annual Chess Kings Invitational. <laughs> My name is Adisa Banjoko. They call me the uh, Bishop of Hip Hop, and I'm the co founder of the Hip Hop Chess Federation. You know, I'm going to the hip hop chess thing today, and a lot of people have said, What? What do those two things have in common? And I said, Are you duh. racist or what? It's like, Duh, don't you like <laughs> read? Well, I think the problem is, is that if all you really care about is hip hop, or all you care about is chess, or all you care about is martial arts, or you're not really connected to either, you'll never get it, and that's why you're not here, and we are, and we're having a great time without you. But what about gangbangers? Because every yeah, time, I mean, here too. this is how far and removed. They deserve love, right? <laughs> this is how far gang removed a lot of a people. That's what the real problem is. If we hug, hug a gangbanger today. Uh, the truth of the matter is that all people from all walks of life know, play, understand, love, and exchange wisdom through chess. And so I just want to create a platform for us all to do that. Do other things like take the um, chess into schools and teach yeah, chess? Yeah, actually, you know, we go into the juvenile halls. We're gonna, we're actually, we're supposed to go into the juvenile halls the day before this event, but they had some scheduling issues. But we're, I mean, we're gonna take it. Uh, I got friends up in DVI, San Quentin, Vacaville Penitentiary. Oh, What's up, y'all? Elamine, I'm coming to see you, homeboy. So for real. <laughs> Uh, no, we, we do. We, we work with uh, cats in different prisons, and uh, we're going to take Can I go? This. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you want to come kick it, come kick it. I mean, really, we, I do work with the Lifers Group up in uh, DVI, Duel Vocational Institute. What's up, Usama? Uh, Mustafa, the rest of y'all, how you living? And, uh, you know, I'm excited to work with people from, you know, the, I guess the whole thing is this. Let's give people who need more access to chess and wisdom get it, and let's let those who already have it share it more. Did you play chess today? Yes. And you beat some people's butt? Yeah. <laughs> so how'd you get so good? My grandpa taught me. Yeah? How long have you been playing chess? For about three years. And so how do you know like what moves to make? You just have to keep your eye on the board and stay with your opponent's mind. And what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a brain surgeon and a criminal justice lawyer. Good. Well, if I get in trouble, I definitely want you to be my lawyer. And when I need a lobotomy, can I give you a call? Yeah. My name is Lorenzo Page. My name is Elgin Cole. And I'm Timo. And you were playing chess today, so who was the best out of all you three? Who beat each other's butt? We all got the same record, three and one. You did? Yeah. Who did you beat? Uh, everybody, except for <laughs> one person. What's the secret to being really good at chess? You just got to learn how to... You know what I'm saying? Be strategic, you know, and learn how to trick your man into making the wrong move so you can, you know what I'm saying, continue with your plan. on a board. That's just like dating. Exactly. <laughs> What's the biggest sacrifice you made that turned into a move, uh, like a win? My horse. Yeah? Yeah. And what did you get for that? His queen. That's right. You trade a horse for a queen. That's how you do it. Slant with the bishop, move straight with the rookies. They coming for your space, keep your composure in place. No time to waste, a full out invasion. Will you cry or die with pride like an Asian? Can you think on your toes, counter attack, come back like enslaved blacks? It's like Iraq. Can you make it home? Cause the battle is on, and they coming for the throne. Will you be overthrown? You gotta see the metaphors and the movements on the chest. Think about it. Hi, I'm here with Emma, and Emma beat the pants off some people here at the Hip Hop Chess Invitational. So how long did it take you, Emma? Well, in the match, in the three minute match, it took me five moves. And was there anything that um, you had to learn or it just sort of came naturally to you? We had to learn about the traps and the forks and the pins and, well, it's, the moves are easy and so is how to use them. but. With, when you've got to like do combinations and checkmates, it's a bit more difficult. So what is your goal and your plan for um, your future in chess? To be the youngest grandmaster in the world. 
Hi, I'm here with one of the legends of hip hop and dance, and I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Pop Master Fable. I'm the vice president of the Rocksteady Crew. Wow, I can't even believe I'm standing here. I'm like a little bit shaking. These kind of events like the chess, uh, teaching kids how to play chess, teaching kids how to play dance, can you speak on that a little bit and how to help them you know, feel good about themselves? Well, I think that's what's key. It's, it's like um, unless we are actually gaining some kind of life experience or something that's going to change our lives for the, for the better, then hip-hop is worthless. So for many of us, many educators, many practitioners of hip-hop hip culture that have seen the potential in hip-hop, um, to use it as a vehicle for upliftment, self-discipline, um, self-appreciation, self-esteem, etc., this is, that's the main goal. Hey, I'm here with Rizza, the champion of the day. He tried on the belt for us, that's a big belt. Yeah, it's a big belt, it like Mike Tyson belt, you know what I mean? What's up, Mike? So tell us, uh, you know, I just talked to Monk, he said, you know, he could have won. How did you, how did you beat the rugged Monk? Well, psychologically, see, I, I play a lot of games with him. I know Monk is a fast mover. Mm -hmm. And so I, aggressive. Yeah, yeah. So I knew that that was going to that's that would be that could be his potential downfall. Mm -hmm. And when I got to the level where I was losing, and I felt like wow, Monk is about to beat me. Uh -oh. I did the psychological thing on What'd him. What'd you do? I lured him in with his speed and made him overlook something, uh -huh. and he fell for the trap and he lost the game. Yeah, I do that a lot when I'm dating. <laughs> <laughs> she falls for the trap and lose the game. <laughs> so tell us about chess and how um, what you think about it, like how it influences you and, and what you've learned from it. Well, I love chess, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to learn to be a master, you know what I mean? I'm probably middle level, you know what I mean? But uh, it's just a fun game, and it's for me personally, for me personally, out of anything to get my mind off of hell and the stress of this world, my daily t toil I go through, it's chess. Are you a queen's man? Oh, I love my queen, you know what I mean? If, I, if my queen come out, she's coming out to shake her ass. You know what I mean? All right, and uh, one last question. What's up with uh, white going first? Hey, that's you tried to change. No, well, that's, that's the rules of the game. It's been like that for 500 years. And then you ask a black man, he go, well, see, that's because the white man always want to control things, so he want to go first. But uh, the funny thing, though, is actually in chess, I don't know if you know this, though, but in chess, it doesn't matter who goes first. It's the response that the black gives that determines... That really sets the, yeah, the tone of the game. Opening. Yeah, that determines yeah. what kind of opening it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, here I go. How are you going to play this? Yeah, exactly. All right. Can I try on your belt? Yeah. Okay, we're going to get... What that? Now I'm going to whip my ass with it. I hope so. <laughs> I hope he will. <laughs> All right, what's up? I'm here with Rugged Man. He claims he's belt. that belt is really his. Yeah, that belt is really mine. What you know? happened? Uh, How come they gave it to Riza? Because at the last minute, at the last second, <laughs> I did a blunder. And in chess, you can't do no blunders. I had them. The game was won. I had the game mm. won. So he totally worked you. Yeah, he worked me, basically. <laughs> that's my belt right there. But that's my dude, though, so I'm not glad somebody from the camp took it home jizzing mad at me right now because it would have been a three-way for that belt. But it's all real. All right, so where do we get to see you next? You live in California, right? Yeah, I stay in California, Compton, California. Look out for us, Black Knights, West Coast Killer Bees, you know, the rugged monk live in the flesh. Just like chess, you gotta see the metaphors and the movements on a chessboard. 64 squares of infinite psychological combat.